Hey class, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some basic tools that are used in servicing automobiles. Number one, make sure you always got yourself a good quality pair of safety glasses. When you're looking for tools and equipment to work on your car, make sure you purchase high quality tools. Sure, you could run out to a cheap place and get yourself some cheap tools that might help work out in a pinch or for a short period of time, but make sure you get yourself some high quality tools if you plan to work on cars for a long time. Make sure you keep your tools organized. We're gonna be taking a look at some options that you can use to do that. Keep your tools clean. That will keep them preventing from getting rusted. And lastly, make sure you use the right tool for the job so your tools don't break on you. When you start off and you just have a couple tools, you might get yourself a nice little toolbox. That might be helpful to have in your trunk or in the back seat of your car or in your garage. If you have a larger garage and a larger space, get yourself a rolling cart. You can have some important, useful tools on the top that are really important, some secondary tools on the bottom drawer, and then some of your more expensive tools locked up in this drawer up here. And then as you progress and as you see inside our shop, we have what's called a rolling cart. And in your rolling cart, you can keep all of your tools organized by different drawers, and you can also keep them locked up in case you need to prevent other people from getting inside. So three different options that you can use to help keep your tools organized. First, we're gonna take a look at wrenches. Wrenches are designed to install and remove nuts and bolts. The size of the wrench is measured between the distance of the jaws of the wrench. Wrenches come in sizes that are either in inches or in metric millimeter sizes. You always wanna make sure you use the right size wrench for the job. We have three different types of wrenches here on the screen. We've got an open head wrench where both sides have open jaws. You can see that one side of the wrench is 11 30 seconds and the other side is 3 8 We have a combination wrench where we have an open size on one side and we also have a box end on the other. You can see that either side is both 3 quarters of an inch. And lastly, we have a ratcheting wrench where we have the open jaw on this side and we have a ratcheting mechanism on this size. Both sides of this wrench is 7 8 There are a lot of other wrenches that you'll find in your box, but these are just a few that you might use. Be sure to go out and buy yourself a good quality set of wrenches. Next, we have a set of sockets and a ratcheting wrench that's used with those sockets. The square opening of the socket handle fits inside the square opening of the socket itself. You'll also notice a reverse mechanism, sometimes labeled on or off, depending on which way you want to turn the socket. Sometimes socket handles are long, and sometimes they're short. There are different sizes of socket head drive sizes, quarter inch or three eighths. There's also half inch and three quarters. For the sockets themselves, you have a standard socket, and then you also have some deep well sockets. The sockets themselves come in different sizes, which are labeled on the side of the socket. The sockets also have different points as to where they contact the bolt. In this instance here, this is a six point socket. There are a variety of their attachments and things that can be used with different types of sockets. Again, be sure to get yourself a high quality set of sockets. Another type of wrench that can be used with sockets is a torque wrench. On this slide, we have a digital and an analog torque wrench. Some parts on an automobile, like a lug nut, need to be tightened to a specific torque setting in pounds per square inch. So by using the torque wrench, you can tighten that lug nut to the exact pounds per square inch that that lug nut needs to be tightened. When the nut or bolt is at the specific torque setting that you've set your wrench to, you'll hear a clicking noise or a beep, depending on which type of torque wrench you're using. Many auto shops use compressed air tools, and it's important to be safe when using compressed air because compressed air can be dangerous. When using compressed air, it's important to have a regulator and a filter to filter out any type of contaminants that might be in the air and also regulate the amount of pounds per square inch of air pressure that you're getting out of your compressed air tools. Some tools that you'll want to use include a blow gun where you can go ahead and blow off any kind of dirt or debris out of the way. 
And next, you'd want to use some type of air pressure regulator, where you can go ahead and set the exact amount of air pressure that's going inside the tire of your vehicle. This is a very useful tool for making sure that tires have the right pressure. Using air tools can help make your job easier when trying to remove stuck lug nuts or other types of bolts from cars. Here we have an air impact wrench that is connected to um, your air hose and this can be used to remove any type of lug nut on your car. You've got your little attachment here where your impact socket is going to go on. You also have your reverse mechanism on your air wrench. You also see these deep well sockets. You notice that they're black because they're specifically designed to be used for air wrenches. Don't use your regular silver sockets when you're using an air wrench. They can break. Use some high quality black impact sockets when you're using your air wrench. Another good tool to have is a cordless impact driver. Here's one from DeWalt with a quick little attachment. You can go ahead and use the impact uh, sockets you saw in the last slide and you can use your cordless impact driver uh, to remove some of those rusted on bolts. Um, this is a great tool to have in your tool cabinet. A good quality vise is another good important tool to have in the shop. A vise is good for holding parts if you have to cut, drill, hammer, or press. Usually they're best when they're mounted to the workbench. And you can also get some rubber or wood caps to make sure that the jaws of the vise don't mar any piece of wood or piece of metal that you put inside of there. A vise is great for holding those pieces real, real securely. Sometimes a hammer is needed when working on automobiles. In this picture, we've got a couple different hammers that you might see. You have some dead blow hammers or even a plastic hammer. Plastic hammer is good because it has a nice soft head, so it won't break or damage parts. A dead blow hammer is full of some metal shot, and when you hammer it, the extra weight of that lead shot puts some more effort into that hammer swing. The ball peen hammer is probably the most common hammer that you'd see inside an automotive shop. The flat face is used for generally striking things, and the round end can be used for shaping metal parts. Can you identify some of the pliers here on this slide? We have a couple of needle nose pliers, which are good for getting into small little spaces. We have a pair of locking pliers or some vice grips, which are good to clamp onto and hold apart. We have some cutting pliers, which are used to cut wire. We have some slip joint pliers, which are used to grasp parts of different sizes. We also have several pairs of grooved joint pliers, which are also used to grab parts of different sizes. There are a variety of pliers to choose from when working on automobiles. When working on a car, you often have to lift the car up off the ground. So here we have a hydraulic jack, which can be used to lift your car up. And once the car is up in the air, you want to make sure you use a good set of quality jack stands to keep the car up there off the ground. And in the trunk of most cars, you have a set of emergency jacks and pliers that can help you get the tire off and lift the car up off the ground in case you got to change a flat tire. And also, good to have a pair of jumper cables in case one of your friend's batteries dies and you got to jump their car. It's happened to me on many occasions. So it's a quick overview of some of the basic tools that are used on servicing automobiles. Hopefully after watching this, you'll go ahead and be able to start outfitting your shop, your garage, your tool bench with some of the tools that you need to help working on your car. Thanks for watching.